I think one of the most mysterious areas in the entire galaxy is really its center. The galactic center in the Milky Way, or I guess really any galaxy, is filled with unanswered questions. And not even because there's so much stuff here, it's really because of all of the gas that's blocking the view of everything that could be hiding here. But in the last decade or so, various new telescopes and a lot of new techniques allowed us to finally see through all of this and allowed us to finally start discovering what's actually here. And here, there's a lot of stuff. Way more activity than anyone could imagine. But more recently, we finally started getting first images by the James Webb from this mysterious hidden region. The James Webb finally began its most exciting study of the center of the galaxy. With this first image, showing us the region known as Sagittarius C. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss the central region once again, talk about what was discovered in these new images, and of course talk about what else we know about this and what some of these mysteries potentially are. But here, let's actually start with a slightly zoomed out map first, just so that you understand what we're really looking at. Because when we say galactic center, we don't really mean this bright blob in the middle. This is just called a galactic bulge. But if you start going closer and closer to the center, at some point, you'll start noticing that there's a very highly dense region right in the center. A region with a lot of stars, all packed within just a few light years. And this represents the rotational center or the Berry center of the Milky Way galaxy. This is where the black hole is located, but also a lot of other massive stars. And though it's kind of difficult to imagine this, but there are roughly around 10 million stars in this region that's only approximately 4 light years across. And today we know that many of them have been formed during an unusual burst of star activity in the center that seem to correspond either to some kind of a galactic collision or a sudden influx of gas from the outside that creates these very powerful waves of gas which form these dense regions that then become stars. You can actually learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. And this is something that happens quite a lot because many stars here are only a few million years old. But because this whole region is hidden by so much gas, it's practically impossible to study this. Nevertheless, a lot of things here are visible in radio light, and quite a lot of things are visible in the X-rays and the infrared. This image shows us the X-rays, by the way. And although this is about 26.5 thousand light years away from us, today the telescopes are good enough to even see extremely small objects orbiting around the center. And this is, of course, how the black hole in the center was eventually confirmed. But majority of the previous studies were usually done on Sagittarius A. That's the brightest region, the one that contains the black hole, and the one that contains these millions of stars. But naturally, as these images show us, there are other things and other regions here with potentially other mysteries. And though we've discussed quite a lot of them, some of them even today have not been investigated very thoroughly. Nevertheless, even in this image, you can see lots of different stuff and obviously lots of mysteries. For example, one thing that becomes really apparent is how many different supernova remnants seem to be here. Although in this case, this is a bit zoomed out, with the distance across right here representing approximately 1000 light years. But even these supernova remnants seem to be really large. Like this one right here is approximately 240 light years across. And some of them happened only a few thousand years ago. And so at least a few of these supernova remnants that were studied previously were discovered to be just way too powerful, possibly 100 times more powerful than a typical supernova. At the moment there is no answer to any of this, but one of the assumptions was that maybe as the star passed very close to the black hole, it became compressed and due to this compression exploded extremely violently. With the other really unusual feature being these very strange threads. We've talked more about these threads in one of the videos in the description because thousands of them were discovered in the entire galaxy, but this is clearly the signs of magnetic activity right in the center. Then there are some other mysteries from Sagittarius B that surprisingly seems to contain very unusual emissions indicating that the black hole erupted 350 years ago. It's actually because the distance to this region is approximately 350 light years and we're now detecting very strange emissions coming from Sagittarius B that seem to be coming from the central black hole. With the assumption being that approximately 350 years ago, our central black hole potentially exploded, producing a million times more emissions than it currently does today. It's unknown why this happened, but it's obviously expected from central black holes. And we know that this happened many times previously, especially because of the observations from the famous Fermi bubbles. Now this very likely happened millions of years ago, but it was probably a lot more powerful. And even though in the last few years, so many of these regions have been explored by various studies, there was one region that wasn't. 
we surprisingly know very little about Sagittarius C. The least explored region, located 300 light years away from the central black hole, and estimated to have about 500,000 stars forming there right now. And it's actually the radiation from these stars that produce these beautiful nebular structures. But the mystery here is why exactly are they forming there and how are they able to form in such a dense region? And not just a dense region, an extremely intense region with so much radiation and so much activity from the central black hole. And so now we have this new image from the James Webb showing us a cross section of approximately 50 light years, discovering some of the main features here, but also discovering certain mysteries. For example, for the first time ever, the researchers discovered this enormous protostar cluster, with at least one star here being 30 solar masses in mass. And there's so much activity going on here that this entire cloud basically becomes ionized hydrogen. Or in other words, it becomes a very bright nebula. There is also this unusual dark cloud resembling a kind of a hole. But this is not a hole, this is actually where a lot of future stars are forming. They just haven't become stars yet and instead have a lot of gas that's blocking everything here. We sometimes refer to these similar structures as dark nebula or absorption nebula. Quite a lot of these exist around the Milky Way, produced by tiny interstellar dust grains, with these tiny dust particles potentially containing carbon monoxide and nitrogen, and very likely a lot of other organic compounds, blocking the passage of light. And so at some point this will probably also become very similar to this feature, but it first has to start forming stars that can then illuminate all of this gas. And then once again, we have a discovery of these unusual needle-like structures of ionized hydrogen, which in this case, unlike in the previous image, where they mostly seem to point perpendicular to the galactic disk, very likely representing some kind of a magnetic line. In this case, these unusual needles seem to be more chaotic and pointed everywhere. Now, their origin is most likely magnetic in nature as well, but in this case, it basically suggests magnetic fields here are extremely chaotic and seem to point in every direction. In other words, this shows us a very turbulent region with a lot of magnetized gas clouds that seem to be forming stars and, as a result, affect everything around them with very powerful winds, jets, and lots of lots of radiation. Or at least that's what we know now. This is a brand new image and so there are no actual studies yet or any specific discoveries in regards to what we're looking at here. Nevertheless, it's exciting to hear that James Webb is finally looking at the center of the galaxy which means that in the next year, or maybe two years, we're going to have so much to talk about with so many new discoveries and potentially new objects that we never knew existed. This is by far one of the most beautiful images of this entire region and definitely shows us the power of this beautiful telescope. But I guess, at least for now, that's all I have for you. We'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.